Gaffer, it's been a busy week transfer wise. Let's just start. Obviously, Connor departed to Queen's Park Rangers earlier on in the week, and, and that's a good move for all parties. It's it's what you want as a as a manager. You want to see your players growing, developing, improving, attracting attention, and it's what as a football club we need. You know, part of the the business model at this club is recruit players from lower levels, um, recruit players that we can develop, develop the players, and then move them on in a in a sensible fashion, a fashion that's good for the club, that's good for the player, and um, it's all part of the business model that's at the club. So yeah, it's good that we've done that piece of business. Hopefully there'll be you know many more to follow in the in the coming months and in the coming years, and uh, you know the recruitment that we've done this week is you know part of bringing to the club the type of talent that we think we can develop um, and we can help to move to high levels in the future. Those three arrivals, um, if you could talk us through uh, the, the, the background towards those, starting with Harry Toffolo was the first in the building. Well, I, I don't think um, anybody would uh, argue with the fact that we've been a little bit imbalanced since we uh, since we lost Cal. He was giving us so much thrust down the left-hand side. When you play a diamond, it's so important that you can get down the side of the diamond and that your full-backs are great athletes and good footballers. And uh, Laurie's done terrifically well. Uh, he came on at uh, half-time against uh, Sheffield United and he did a very solid job. Um, similarly dependable against Preston, but he's playing out of position. He's not a left-back. He doesn't give us that thrust down the left-hand side. He's not got that confidence in the final third that a natural left-sided player gives you. And balance is vital. So... You know, although he's filled in well, uh, I've been looking for you know a left-sided option. Cosy, he's coming back, but he's been out a long time. It's going to take him you know some weeks before he gets match fit, so we can't depend upon him being right. And uh, Harry is a very talented young player. He's got good experience in League One. He was terrific at, at Swindon last year. Uh, when he played for Swindon last year, they won more points than when he didn't play for Swindon last year. And I like those kind of players, players that have a positive effect on the team. So he comes in with that background, that experience to add his quality down the left-hand side. And then it was a question, okay, we're losing our, our top goal scorer, a, a guy who gives us pace and threat in behind. And of all the players I've watched in recent years, one has stuck in my mind. And you know, when it came to replacing Connor, Shaq was very much top of the agenda for me. Um, we've watched him as a club, and I think uh, Barry has become more and more enthusiastic about you know, him as a proposition. Uh, we saw him score a couple of great goals against Chelsea at 21s and uh, he got a goal against Man City this week and he started to show when he plays at nine he's been out on loan and he's played wide and uh, his goals per game record doesn't look great when you see what he's done in the Football League but he's generally played wide when he's played in the Football League. Through the middle I watched a lot of him, um, Tottenham's under 21s played at Stevenage and I saw a lot of him, he used to watch all their games and he was a constant threat, constant menace, he's got pace to burn and he can put the ball in the back of the net so he's a really exciting talent, I think he's going to grow a lot here and uh, look forward to, to having him in the ranks. It's not often you can say we've lost our top goal scorer, but I'm excited about his replacement, but that's, that's genuine. And uh, I first watched him play for West Brom at 21 level when I was watching Kemar Roof. And uh, I went up there to see Kemar, and uh, I have to say he played well on the night and, and interested me. Uh, and I was, I was contemplating making a move, but uh, Ads was the one. I, I couldn't take my eyes off of this player who set the world on fire, playing in behind the front, uh, creating chances. He scored a hat-trick that night, but it wasn't the goals that appealed to me, it was what he did in general play. He's a very exciting attacking player, and uh, you know I think he'll give us that little bit of creativity coming out of midfield that perhaps has dwindled a bit since Jay went uh, went out. So you know we lost Jay, we lost uh, uh, Callum, we lost, um, we lost Connor, and uh, thankfully, you know, the, the deal that has seen Connor go has given us the ability to make those improvements in not just the centre forward area, but elsewhere in the team. And I think uh, they're all good strengthening moves. On the housekeeping front, Miles Addison was on a sort of a short term deal. He's now left the club, I believe. Is that right? Well, it, Miles joined knowing full well that, uh, you know, we had a, an abundance of centre half talent. And uh, I have to say, he's been, he's been brilliant. Two months here, when I've required him to fill in, whether he's match fit or not, he's gone in there and he's done the job that a great experienced pro can do. His attitude and application day in, day out has been phenomenal, especially for an experienced boy who's not been getting the game time that I'm sure he would want in his heart. But we've helped bring him back to fitness. There's other clubs interested in him now. It's very difficult for us to strike an ongoing deal with him because he's an experienced lad. You know, He commands you know, a salary that matches that. And at the moment, we've got Rico, we've got Jack in outstanding form. We've got Bozzy who's going to be back. We've got Gabby who's on his way back. We've got Sean Brisley. Um, five tremendous centre-halves at the football club 
and it's difficult to justify you know putting a wage on on Miles's head that is relevant to his experience and uh, it's one of those horrible situations where short term it suited both of us uh, longer term it's probably not going to suit him but I wouldn't think twice about playing him in my team he's an outstanding person an outstanding player and this weekend it's Gillingham uh, the next opposition obviously third in the table at this moment in time very similar to us in terms of the parallels of uh, their recruitment and a young side and they're, and they're trying to achieve big things well what counts uh, this time of year is not what you've been what you've been is uh, is the past. What what counts is what you are now, and uh, what you are in the next twenty games. There's a there's a promotion to be won. Um, three teams will get out of the league. Um, realistically, um, those teams will be in the top eight, top ten right now. Uh, maybe someone will come with a late run. It happens. I know uh, when I was in League Two, I won promotion from 18th in January, and uh, we came with a we came like a steam train and uh, we just kept winning our football matches and it's, it's what you do now with the finish line in front of you uh, some teams just seem to get the bit between their teeth they just seem to grow in intensity they kind of make the right moves they make the right additions at the right time and that momentum just builds and uh, it's up to us to be one of the three teams that builds its momentum and uh, uses the finish line as a real draw as a magnet and uh, you know, we're all in the mood we're in the mood for any game we play home or away we know we have to win points to win promotion